Hi, I'm Bob Allison with Shop Saver CNC. Around here, they call me Router Bob. Today's video, we're going to create a river table using a walnut slab, a lot of epoxy, and some machining time. Let's get started. Sean, last year we made an epoxy table and it came out pretty nice, but it could be better. Dan Wellens, who owns Country Tables, just gave us a walnut slab. And I really want to make a table out of it, but I'd like to do a river table. Have you ever made a river table? We've done that in the cabin oh, shop. Tell me the procedure. Well, we're going to start out, we'll flatten the slab, make sure it's good and flat on each side. That way when we set it into our box, I'm going to need you to get a box together. Okay to hold the epoxy in. I do have some three quarter melamine we can okay, use. We can do that. So if you can get a file for that, we can we'll make do that. that. Happen. Yep. Um, after we pour the epoxy in, we gotta let it sit for a few days, okay. let it dry real, real well. We'll pull it back out, bust it out of that form, put it on the table, surface both sides again, do a perimeter pass, and we're gonna have a beautiful table. Okay, so once that's done, then you're gonna see wood grain with the exception of where the river is, and yep. it's gonna be blue. All right, now, could we possibly 3D engrave the Shop Saber logo in that blue? That'd be and, no problem at all. And fill it with white resin. Yeah, that'd be Perfect. no problem. What do we need to do to get started on this? How about you get the files for the form, for flattening the slab? I'll get the material ready. Let's make it happen. Okay, the first thing we're going to have to create on this project is what I call a box. And the purpose of the box is to is to hold the resin. And, and this is a 3D model of what it's gonna look like to give you an idea. So we start with a base piece and that's three quarter inch melamine. Now let's take, let's hide that. And you see the way this fits together, I've actually left a little gap in there. And the reason is this has to be disassembled after the, the resin sets. So we needed a way to get rid of this. And so we basically left a gap on the outside. So when we assemble the box, it gets pushed against this edge. And what you don't see here are pocket screws. We'll do those in VCar Pro. But basically that's what's really critical. And, and what's important about this assembly is it can't leak because we can't take a chance of the resin leaking out onto the floor. So that's why we basically engineer this and then we assemble it, then it actually gets sealed and then we put a, a release tape on the inside. Now we're gonna take the parts like this and open them up in VCar Pro. Now here are the box parts in VCar Pro. So you've got the main piece here and then you've got the side rails and the end rails. And you'll notice some red lines on here. What those actually are are slots for pockets and I'll show you how that's done. In fact, let's open one of those up you might be interested, it's really a nice thing to do. So it's called fluting. We open it up, and basically, if you look up here, okay, it's gonna cut this direction. So it's gonna start at the surface, and it's gonna go to 3 8 deep. And it just happens that creates the right angle, and it's going to uh, create a ramp in here. So that's gonna be done with a ball nose tool, and it makes a real nice way to use pocket screws. Now let's take a look at the order we're gonna do things. The first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna drill some holes. And, and these are the holes here, one, two, three, four. Those are drilled in there just to uh, make it easier to screw it together on the ends. Okay, then we're gonna cut those pockets. And once again, this is a, an eighth inch deep pocket that these rails fit in. Then we're gonna do our fluting and the fluting is done for our pocket screws. Now, now that we're ready to cut it out, let me show you the procedure. First thing we're gonna do is identify which parts are small. And these, are, we, we're calling all these small parts. We're gonna cut through them, leave an onion skin. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna return and cut those out freely. Then we're gonna cut the outside. So now let's look at all that in simulation. When we put the sheet on the machine, we'll just preview all tool pass. And when we're done, we'll have all our parts. Now, let's send our program file out to CNC Sean and let's make this box. All right, I got the file from Router Bob for our river table box. We're only gonna need four tools for this. The first tool we're gonna use is a five millimeter drill bit. We'll use that for uh, pilot holes when we put the box together. The second one is gonna be a two flute ball nose bit. And Router Bob did something kind of cool with this using a, uh, a pocket hole tool path for that. 
The third one is going to be a two flute half inch down shear bit. We'll use that to do all of our dados. And then finally, we're going to use a 3 8 compression bit to cut everything out. We've got everything loaded, ready to go. Now let's start cutting this file. Preparations complete. Now let's talk about how we fly cut one of the surfaces of the slam. The first thing we have to figure out is what shape is it. Let me show you a neat technique that we used to do that. We started by taking a photograph of the slab, and that's what you see here. And then we scale the photograph so that it matched the dimensions of the slab. Right, so we put that on the machine table, and then the next thing we needed to do is in VCAR Pro is to find the outline of the slab, and we created a, a drawing on that, and that became that. So then that became the shape that we applied the fly cut program to, right? And that's what it looks like. So there's a tool path. And if we actually, once, once we run it, that's what it's actually going to look like. So that's how you take an irregular shape and you create a tool path for it. Now we're ready to send the files out to CNC Sean and let's go fly cut the slab. All right, just like before, I got the file from Router Bob. We're going to make this one real simple. We're gonna use the Vortex two and a half inch fly cutter, the same bit we use to surface our spoil board. We're gonna use that to flatten the slab. Now let's see it in action.
Now we've got everything cast on the slab. The next step is to create the tool pass to finish a project out, and I'll show you how we do that. So we've got our slab on the table, right? It's probably not going to be able to be held at this stage with flow through because it's not flat enough. So the first thing we want to do is get it braced or, or blocked where it doesn't move around so we can establish a flat plane on that surface. And so that's what, what we're going to do. And what we typically do is put the surface up that rocks the least and then put boards around the outside that are held down with vacuum. And that keeps it from moving around until we establish that first flat plane. Well, the block that you see here is actually the blank. And then what this red line is, I've made it larger. This is going to be uh, what we use for actually uh, creating the, the fly cut tool path. And I've made it longer on both ends so that it leaves it smoother. We don't have the cross marks coming across here because eventually we're going to have to sand that out. So that's what this one does. And if we look at tool pass, that's the fly cut tool path. And you notice I said fly cut zero. By the way, this is what it's going to do. Uh, so when we run that now, <clears throat> the reason I said fly cut zero is this. The depth of cut is zero. All right. Also, if we look, you see that it's touched off to the top of the surface. So here's what we're doing. We're putting the slab on the table. We're locating the center. That becomes the origin. We're setting X, Y, zero to that. Now we're bringing the tool down and touching off just e equal to the table. And then we're going to run this. It's not going to take any off other than if there's a high spot. So the idea is to, to control everything. So we're going to fly cut it, and then we'll take incrementally until we get a surface here that's perfectly flat. So that's the first step. Once you get there, you should be able to flip that over and actually hold that with flow through. Uh, now, same, same thing. We take the same program. We locate the center. Uh, we fly cut it again, and our goal is to fly cut it until it's smooth on the surface. So we did that on the first side. We've done that on the second side, and then we want to actually get the uh, get our finished thickness. Now, the next operations we need to create have to do with trimming the outside. That's what this geometry does here. We're going to use a three-quarter inch straight bit, and, and the reason we're doing that is because it's, I believe it's an inch and five-eighths thick, so it has to have a long cutting edge. We're going to do it in, in probably three passes, and then we're going to do a finish pass and remove about 15 thousandths because that'll give us a beautiful, smooth finish. So there's two tool paths that we created for that. This one's the rough outside, and then the finish pass. Right, once again, that completes the blank. Now, here's the part that's interesting. The last thing we have to do is to cut this logo, but we really don't know where it's going to go because we don't know where the river is. All right, so, but it doesn't matter because, once again, zero, zero is the center. So we take the slab on the table, and, and then we decide where we want the center of this logo to be, and we make that X, Y, zero. And then we run these two tool paths, and that creates the 3D engrave. Then that 3D engrave is going to get filled with uh, white resin, and when it cures, then the surface gets fly cut one more time. So those are the tool paths we're going to need. So our next step now is to send these tool paths out to Sean. All right, now that we got the table out of the mold, we've got it on the CNC, we need to fly cut both the top and bottom surfaces, make sure it's real nice and flat, get all that epoxy off. We're gonna use the same fly cut bit that we used to flatten the slab to start. After we get that done, we're gonna use a three quarter inch two flute down cut bit. We'll use that to, to clean up the outside, get it cut to the size we want. When we finish that, we're gonna switch over to doing our logo in it. The first tool we're gonna to use there is a, a quarter inch two flute down cut bit. That'll just hog out a bunch of the material in the middle of each letter. Then for the second tool, we're gonna to use a 90 degree insert bit from Vortex. Clean up all those edges, make the letters real tight. So let's not waste any more time, let's get started.
right, we've got our tabletop all planed down on the CNC. We've got a beautiful day in Minnesota, which we haven't had in a while. We thought we'd bring it outside, get it out of the showroom, keep the dust out of there, get it all sanded up out here. After hours of sanding, we've got our table pretty close to being finished up. We're gonna do a little cleanup, get all the dust off, and get to the finish. We're gonna be using a Rubio Monocoat two-part oil finish. This provides a really durable, real nice, rich finish. All we need to do, get to mixing it and get started. Sean, the base came out really nice for our river table. Hey, Rotor Bob. I just finished mounting it to it. Lee did an awesome job with that. You know, I love the size of it, how beefy it is. It fits this wall on the table perfect. Look how nice the river came out. It looks like our logo's floating in the river. Yeah, once we put that Rubio Monocoat on there, it just made everything pop. I mean, all the colors of the green and the walnut just looks fantastic, doesn't it? That's so nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can contact us at ShopSaber.com. And check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to see more about Lee's video, we'll link it at the end. Thank you for watching.